uh, right now our lakes and rivers are under attack all across the country and sooner or later here in New Mexico they could very well be too by what are called zebra and quagga mussels. If we do not protect lakes and the rivers they could be changed forever and this is not in a good way. Joining us to talk about this this morning and the threat these zebra and quagga mussels can pose. James Dominguez, the Aquatic Invasive Species Program Coordinator for the New Mexico Game and Fish. Good morning, James. Thanks for coming in. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Okay, for folks who do not know, what exactly is a zebra mussel or a quagga mussel? Uh, think of them as uh, the normal clam oysters type thing you see in the mm -hmm. ocean, just on a smaller scale. In uh, fresh water. And they are fresh water. They're non-native. They come from uh, the Eastern Europe uh, side of the world. Wow. So they got over here by big commercial ships back in the 80s. And then as they've made their way across the West, it's by transportation on boats and trailers and uh, different things that get in the water. They get attached and then they make their way over. Oh, okay, these are not good. They're not something you want in your lakes and rivers. They're in how many states in lakes and rivers right now? Just about every state in the United States has them, except for seven. Except so, for seven. And, and New, New Mexico, Mexico <laughs> right now, we're in a good place. So what we want to talk about this morning is exactly how to prevent these things from getting here. We have a good look at them. And so I think what happens is you, you, you have a boat, you take your boat out into the lake, and at that point, they're not like this that tack onto you. They're small, right? They're very small to the point where you wouldn't even know that you have them in the water. Exactly. They're, they're what we call microscopic levels. So okay. they're sitting in the water, they're floating through the, the lake, and... If you leave water on your boat, you have the potential to, to move them around. So. Okay, so what happens, I think, people is they go to one lake, they put their boat in there, they take it out, they don't clean it the right way, they go to another lake, and then the zebra mussels and the quagga mussels wash off, and then they invade that lake. Exactly. That's exactly the, the, the process of mussels moving around the country is just boats carrying water. Okay. Um, and not taking care of the boat as, as they need to. Okay, so the ones we're seeing here, you see in the jar and on the license plate, uh, these ones are obviously mature. They're the ones that end up growing, I take it? Correct. Okay, so how long does it take for the, the microscopic ones, basically, the ones we can't see to become like these ones? Their, their full life cycle is about four to five years. Okay. So they're, they're not long lived. The problem is they're very good at reproducing. Gotcha. So within a couple of years, once they get introduced in your reservoir, you'll have millions of them and okay. they attach to everything. So. All right, so how do we prevent them from jumping into the lakes and rivers here, particularly if we have boats and we're traveling out of the state to go have some fun? Well, the first thing is, is know which uh, water bodies in the country are positive. You guys have that information on your website? We do have it okay. on our website. That's at casa.com uh, too. So know those positive waters and then just do the, the, the clean drain and dry uh, slogan for cleaning off your boats. Clean your, uh, clean all debris, clean all plants, anything that might be attached to your boat, go ahead and get that off your boat and, and leave it at the water body that you picked it up at. It's already there. Gotcha. Uh, drain your boat. Uh, most people already pull their drain plug, Yeah. but they forget about the inner compartments. There's uh -huh. little bits of water sitting in the, in the cooler or maybe your live wells, uh, bilge lines, anywhere okay. that water can sit has the potential to transfer. Okay, and, and that's then, just good for your boat in general too. Absolutely, yeah. and, and a lot of people are already doing this. Uh, they just don't take that extra step for mm -hmm. the AIS portion. They're doing it more for aesthetics. Okay. And then the last part is the dry part. Um, once you drain it out by lowering your motor, uh, doing some of those things, go ahead and towel out things. Uh, use a sponge. Get every yep. bit of water you can find. Get it out of, the, out of the boat. And then maybe even just let it sit in the sun for an extra day. New Mexico is yep. perfect for that. Three, <laughs> the sun will help dry it 360 out. 360 plus days of sun, it, it, it'll dry it out real yeah. quick. Yeah, real quick. Is there any way, once these get in our lakes, is there any real way to get them out? You said they multiply and you get millions of them real quick. Not, not really. At, at the current uh, state, we can't get them out of the water. So once they're here, it's, it's a pretty devastating effect. Agriculture, uh, recreation, the environment, they're all going to have uh, uh, some sort of effect. Okay. You buy chili, yeah. you're probably going to pay more for chili because they're going to have to keep that infrastructure. People uh, start clean. paying attention as soon as you say pay more for chili. <laughs> James Dominguez with New Mexico State Parks and Rec. Thanks for coming in in the Thank Game you. and Fish Department. Appreciate it very much. You want to find out more about zebra and quagga mussels, how to uh, prevent yourself uh, from getting them on your boat, head to our website, casa.com. Click on the blog.